Welcome back to wizard-blog.com. If you saw my startup video, you'll know that I promised to teach you a little bit of cult knowledge, that I would talk over some philosophies, to show you some spell work, a little ritual work, and also some practical magic. Practical magic is basically using all of the elements around you, whether those be natural elements or things that you can pick up at your local stores, to craft um, magical tools of all kinds. Now, and all of you know who are magical practitioners that a pendulum is a very important magical tool that you can use for almost everything. And one of its biggest uses, of course, is in divination, but there's many other uses for it as well. Now, most of you that are familiar with pendulums probably recognize pendulums along this line. Now, sometimes, like this one, they're made of metal, or sometimes there's a, um, a piece of stone on the end, a precious stone. And these are really good pendulums to use for like if you're going over maps to look, f if you're inside and you're going over maps to look for lost items or you're doing divination. But the problem I've always had with pendulums is that uh, they're not very strong when you're out on field work. You see, as a traveling wizard, I like to be out in the field quite a bit. And one of the things I like to do is go to um, burial mounds and be able to talk to spirits and uh, to use divination from those burial mounds. Now, here in England, the burial mounds are awfully are oftenly sorry are oftenly up on high hills. Now, when you get up to the top of those hills, the one thing you always encounter is a lot of wind. The problem, of course, is when you take a pendulum up there so you can talk to the spirit, is that when the wind hits, it's next to you. So you've got the pendulum spinning around in circles. You can't uh, sensitize the vibration and the feelings in order to get answers because the wind is just whipping it around. So that bothered me quite a bit. I, I kept using a pendulum uh, inside but then I was trying to figure out the perfect tool to use outside. But one day I thought of this idea and I wanted to share it with you. Now, what you need in those great winds, obviously, is something that can't be swung by them. And so I looked around in our hardware shop and I came up with this. This is a plumb bob. Now you know, strangely enough, how much the plumb bob looks like my little pendulum. But what I found that was even more exciting about this plumb bob was the top screws off. It opens up into a little chamber, or uh, what a lot of people would call witness chamber. And of course what you can do with that is if you're talking to a particular spirit or you're looking for someone, you can take a, a piece that represents them, and stick it in here, and screw the top back on. Now, of course, something this heavy being used in the winds has got to have something pretty strong to hold it up. So what I did was I bought some five-pound test fishing line, and I simply strung it up through the middle of the plumb bob and pulled it up. Now, of course, you need something for your fingers. And what I did was I, I picked something that was really comfortable for my hand, what I decided to use was a witching stone. Now, it, I'm a very lucky wizard in that I live near a beach, and so I'm able to find quite a few of these w witching stones. They're soft because they've been buffed down by the sea, and because it is a witching stone and it has a big hole through the center, it's the ideal thing to take your five pound test around, tie it through. You have a very nice pendulum. I like to call it a field pendulum. And when you get up to the top of the mountains, it does not get upset by the wind at all. In fact, about a week ago, I went to the top of a hill to do some work. And when I got up there, the wind was whipping so hard I was barely able to stay on my feet. 
and yet the pendulum wasn't switched at all, so I was able to feel the vibration in the mounds and talk to the spirits up there. And so, the, what I wanted to show you was, was not only how to make this particular pendulum, which I call a field pendulum, but to just show you how inexpensive it can be. When I bought this pendulum, excuse me, they're all getting tied together, but when I bought this little pendulum, it cost me eight pounds. To make this big pendulum cost me um, about a pound fifty to two pounds. The stone, of course, I found on the beach was free. The five pound test was fairly inexpensive. You can get a whole roll for approximately three pounds. And the plumb bob was only a pound. So the whole thing cost me about two pounds, two pounds fifty. Now at the current rate of exchange between the pound and the dollar, it means that this would probably in America cost you just slightly over two dollars to make. And that's what I wanted to share with you. I wanted you to um, see this and see how easy it is to make. And if you're like me, a, a wizard that likes to uh, do a lot of work, or a witch, that likes to do a lot of work out in the open, then I would highly suggest getting yourself a really heavy plumb bob, a length of fishing line, and I would say a stone to ground it, but it doesn't have to be a stone. Anything that's soft in your hand, that you can run the fishing line up through. That's all I wanted to share with you for this time. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to working with you even more. Namaste.